Hi, welcome to Circuit Analysis. In this video, I'm looking at ComSol Multiphysics and their EM module. And I wanna use this for extracting some parasitics from transformers, but I thought I'd start off with just a real quick start tutorial on how to create just a single winding and do an analysis on it. So let's jump into it. So here we are in ComSol, and this is version 6.1. And the first thing you do when you make a new one is there's this model wizard or blank model. And it's really easy to set stuff up so the wizard's not real useful. We'll just do a blank model. And then we have the setup here with all these panels. You can see this is kind of the, the model builder where you set up all the different um, parts for the model. And they have it set up kind of nicely. If you just look across the top here, this is the workflow. So you start off defining the model and geometry, and then you add materials to the model. And then you apply the physics, you mesh it, you apply the studies, which is like simulation settings, and then you look at the results. So down here, the settings are for each one of these items in the model builder. If you click on here, then this changes. It lets you set these up. This is where you draw the 3D geometry and then these sidebars pop up here when you want to add physics or studies. Down here is the messages when you're running simulations. You have progress and logs and then output tables for post-processing the results. So the first thing we need to do is add a component. So here, these are all the different options, whether you want to do a 2D simulation or a 3D simulation or have a axiometric where you're just doing part of it and it's a mirrored with the symmetry. So 2D is gonna be way faster, uh, but 3D is a little easier to understand and maybe make more accurate. We're gonna do 3D. So now we have this component here. This is our 3D component. And we have this geometry tab, and that opens up these, uh, some of these that were grayed out before. So in geometry, you can either look up here and click on stuff, or you can right click and do stuff with the right click menu. So here, the simplest way to do a coil is if we just use the helix primitive. So the way ComSol works for drawing geometries is by defining a series of operational steps. So it's actually kind of like if you were scripting something where you didn't have a GUI and you, you can actually right click on these and you can do copy as code to clipboard. You know, see that's the actual script. So it's really kind of a graphical way of laying down scripts that define operations that create the geometry. So for the helix here, what you do is you fill out all these settings that you want in here, and then you click build selected, and then it will generate the geometry. So you'll notice these units start out in meters by default. So we might wanna go back to geometry and make it something like millimeters, uh, which would be a little more manageable. I'm gonna do, let's just do like 10 turns and a radius of like five millimeters. Just making this stuff up here. Minor radius, we'll put uh, 0.5. And pitch, we'll just do 0.5. And we can generate that and see what it does. So I made that a little bit too close together. So we need this pitch to be a little bit more like maybe 1.5. So let's try that. There we go. So you can just kind of keep building selected to redo it. And uh, as you build your geometry here, you can right click and you can disable parts and then you can do build selected and proceeding and stuff. So you kind of build a whole stack. But we're just going to do this one coil for right now. And to move around in this 3D view, you can use the different mouse clicks. So I'm holding down the left click, you can kind of rotate. And then if you hold down the right click, then you can sort of move like this. And if you get uh, confused, there's these zoom buttons here that kind of get you back to where you can see it. And now uh, we're ready to set up the material properties. So if we come up here to materials, we can add material that pops up over here on this right side. We're going to do built in, see what's in here. So this is like, air, I've got a lot of useful stuff. We want copper, I'm just gonna use copper. Say this is a wire. So now we have the copper and when you click here, you get the settings over here. 
and it automatically populated this selection here. So it automatically selected the only thing that was in here. Uh, if you click this, you can deselect this. You have to make sure that you're assigning the material to the correct object. So if you had multiple objects, you need to come in here and uh, you can use this to clear the entire selection and then you just click to select the objects that you want. Now a note on selecting, uh, there's different types of selection. So domain, boundary, edge, point. And uh, the domain is like the whole object. Boundary is kind of like sections of the object. Edge is just, uh, so boundary is like a 2D edge is like a 1D line and then point is like just a single point. So over here you also have selection domains here. So you can adjust these if you're working uh, with the geometry editor to select different parts of it. So right now we just selected the whole thing and that's assigned to copper. And we can go down here and check out the copper values. So this is what it has as the default for copper. And you can see here the conductivity and that's probably the main thing that we're interested in right now. Uh, and we're just going to leave everything default. So the next step is to define the physics. Click on physics, click add here. It actually got rid of the physics. Um, it was already there. So just click on this tab here. You know, these are all the different physics options. And recently used, let's see, we can just go into this ACDC here and electromagnetic fields. And we're just going to do magnetic fields because that's the main thing we're looking at right now, just magnetic field that this creates. Double click on that. So now we have a magnetic field physics listed over here. And to define that, what we this is kind of where we uh, say how it's all hooked up, how the physics interacts with the geometry. So we have this Amper's law here, which kind of covers everything. And this is just like the magnetic field in space. And what we want to do is right click on here and we want to add a coil. And this is the coil that we made here. So see it has this little uh, sign here because there's nothing selected yet. So we click on here, we want to make sure this is set to green for selection. Click on here, now our coil is assigned to this physics coil. Now you can see here, uh, material type non-solid, I think I just like to set this to define from the material. So a lot of these will just take their value from whatever material is assigned to them. And then you can set currents, voltages, you know, different stuff here. Let's just leave it as current one amp. Uh, it's a, this is the name of the coil. You can name it whatever you want. We'll just leave it one. You can name it like primary or something. Single conductor. Um, or homogenized multi-turn. So we're doing a single conductor because we actually modeled all the turns of it. But the other thing you could do if you want to make the model faster to simulate, you can do this multi-turn. And this will, basically you could model the same thing in a simplified manner with just a cylinder and you just tell it that it's got uh, 10 turns. So you can say here, a circular, you know, current and then down here you give it 10 turns but we're just going to do single conductor so now you don't have the turns it's how many turns are actually in the geometry next we have to define where the current is flowing we have one amp but how does it know where it flows so we need to define the input here and the input you'll notice is the boundaries yeah so this is selecting the input as a face we want this to be the input the top so it's going to flow in and down around the wire and if you hold control and scroll you can zoom in and out but you can see there's a little tiny arrow that it puts going into the surface so that's the current starts off flowing in from right here into the coil it's going to flow down next we just look at, across the top here and do the mesh so we want to define the mesh and they make it real easy in here. You can just set up what fineness you want. We can leave it normal and then all you do is build mesh. And there's more settings you can get into, but this is basic. So there it is. It's easy to view too. You just click on mesh and you can see the mesh. If you click back up here, it's back to 
the ideal view, and then here is the mesh. So you can see if this looks real funky, this looks pretty smooth and following everything. But if it looks real funky, then you might want to change it to a finer mesh here. And that also helps it converge. So finer meshes take longer to simulate, but it's better for convergence and for more accurate results. So next we add study here, which is the simulation settings. It's already over here. So we're going to do an AC analysis or frequency domain. So that's here under general studies. Double click on that. And now it comes up over here. You can give it a name or whatever, but here you can put, you know, frequency. We could do kilohertz. Here you can put frequencies. You can do one comma. You can put like comma separated, 10, you know, 100, that kind of thing. And now you set down here all of the physics that you want to select. So if you had like different physics here, you can do like a whole bunch of different physics things and then a whole bunch of different studies and you can select which one you want each study to be referenced to. And that's pretty much it for the simulation settings. So to run it, you can click this compute here or you can right click on the study, do compute. And now we got this error. It says coil one not solved for solve it in a coil geometry analysis and that is because for certain simulations with coils you need this coil geometry analysis so we're going to add that as well and um, that actually accidentally made another study here so i'm just going to move it by dragging it up here and we want it to be the first step and we can delete this study just right or just click on it hit the delete key and uh We'll confirm that. So this is the error here. You can click on it again if you forgot what it said. And you'll notice that when we ran the simulation, it created the solution, and now we have all these different options here. So we'll go up here, the coil geometry, that is just referencing the same physics, so that's good. Back to here, this is the same. Now, this stuff down here, you can now adjust. So this is the first part here. When we run it again, it'll add another stationary solver for the coiled geometry up here. Right now, this one is just for the frequency domain, and you'll see it has a direct solver and an iterative solver. You'll notice the iterative is enabled, and the direct one is disabled because it's grayed out. So you can right-click um, on it and get properties. So like here, you could enable this one, and that would disable this one down here. This is the fully coupled analysis right here and it's linked to iterative one so you could link it to the direct one up here if it was enabled and the direct from what i understand is more accurate but it takes longer and uh, it also uses more ram which can be an issue because if you don't have enough ram it'll just fail i've got like 16 gigs right now but it has run out of ram several times so you need a lot of ram for these the iterative here this is the one we're using right now. You can check it has lots of different solvers. So when you start getting convergence problems and stuff with more complicated designs, you're going to need to tweak all these different settings to get it to converge. So anyway, now let's try running it again. So we'll right click here, compute. So now the simulation's done and you can see here it says in the messages it took two minutes and eight seconds. And you have here, while it's running, you can check out the progress and the logs and stuff. This right here is a convergence. So while it's running, you could watch it and see if it's converging or not. If you see it come down and uh, the error is not trending towards a very small number, if it comes down here and then it's kind of just bouncing around like this for a long time, then that means it's not converging. And so you'd need to stop the simulation and try some different settings. So you can see here it's got a couple of planes that have been put in here where it shows the magnetic field with this rainbow chart and it's the bottom number here is 6.14 times 10 to the negative sixth the top number here is 4.44 times 10 to the negative fourth and then this under here this 10 to the negative fifth is just mentioning that all these numbers on the chart are multiplied by 10 to the negative fifth so that's because we have selected the flux density right here that it's showing this you can also right click on here and add new things so we could do like an evaluation group and we could do global evaluation and then you can 
write expressions in here for single things that you want to look at. Say we want to calculate the inductance here. Inductance is j omega l uh, from the impedance. So it's the imaginary part of the impedance, and uh, we can calculate that with imag. And then if you do control spacebar, it does this drop down where you can see the different variables in here. So we want to look at coil one, we have current and voltage. So we want the voltage divided by, we can do mf dot i. We want the voltage divided by the current. To convert that to radians, we want to do two pi uh, freak frequency. And so it already knows the units there. And we can say coil inductance. And now, once you're done with that, you click the evaluation button and it'll calculate it here. So you can see this is for the different frequencies and this is the calculated inductance. If you want, you can change this to like pico here, evaluate there, it's pico. So we want like nano. And you can also click on the evaluation group. You can transpose it if you want. That'll do it this way. So one thing you'll notice is that the field, if we zoom in here, is pretty much just inside of the wires. And that's because the only geometry we have in this is the wire. So what we can do is we can add geometry here, a block, and we can do this like, 20, 20, 20, and just base that on the center. And if we build that, that was actually not quite big enough. So maybe we want to make it 50. So now we have a large cube here, and we can take that, and we can assign it a new material. So we'll right click on the materials here and add a material. We'll do air. Now we can assign the cube to the air. When we come down here, we can run our simulation again. All right, so that's been running for a long time now. So you can see if you do convergence, air is going up here 10 to the 38th. So it's just going up and up and up. So this is not converging at all. So we're gonna stop this. Now there's a couple things we can do to help with the convergence. One thing is, if you look over here, the air material, it has default zero on electrical conductivity. So it's a little hard for the solver to deal with zero. So if we change that to like one, like a really small value, one's actually a really small value because if you look at the copper, its electrical conductivity is e to the seventh, so it's really large. So if we change that to one, the other thing is you can go down here in the, the physics part, right click. Sometimes they have like a ground you can add in here. I don't see it in this magnetic one. I think maybe it's just in the electrostatics. So anyway, we'll just change that air conductivity to one and we'll run it again here. So there it is now. That took three minutes and 43 seconds. So you can see now that we have the air, then it shows the field outside of the coil. And you can see the field lines. So to get a realistic simulation, you really need to have the air. Even if you're doing it in space or something, you need to have a cube, I guess, for free space of some sort. Because if you just leave it nothing, then it's it's not really just like free space it's it's like no space we can check and see now if this changes any of these inductances so we've got 15.6 here 11.8 and if we recalculate that 533 and 505 yeah so that really changed that by a couple orders of magnitude so another thing to note is when you're in here, you can select 
which frequency run that you want to look at. So if we switch here, then you have to click plot, I guess, and then it will switch over. So now we're at one kilohertz. Another thing is we can click up here to kind of zoom out. This is showing kind of a wireframe here. If we go back to these uh, studies up here or this physics. Uh, so when we're up here now, this is kind of annoying because this air cube is in the way. So when you're at the top here, you can click on these two things. There's the view, so you can view unhidden, view hidden only, or view all. So if you do unhidden, then here you can do click to hide, and you can hide that. So that's an easy way to get rid of that. The problem with that, it's a little weird, because now when you click on magnetic fields, for some reason it doesn't show anything. So I think it's a little bit buggy. Uh, but if you go back here, you can click this reset hiding gives you this. Are you sure you want to delete? So you click yes. Now what it's actually doing when you do that is it's putting stuff in these definitions here. So for the definitions, there's these views. And you can see if we do hide this, it creates this hide for geometry and it's selected this guy on that. So if you just remove that, now it's not hidden anymore. And what you can do is if you click down here, so if you click up in geometry and you right click, you have this hide for geometry. If you want to hide also for physics, so you can click down here and then when you right click, it has hide for physics. And with that one, you can select the cube to hide for physics. Click on this little eye and now it'll hide it for physics. So that's the way you can have it down here so you can see the coil. And now when we're looking down here at the output, you can see we've hidden that cube. So then you can go back up here and you can just disable this if you want to and go back here and you can see the cubes back. Now hiding these objects does not affect the simulation. So even though it's hidden, the air will still be taken into consideration. All right, so that's it for this super quick intro. I'm gonna do a few more videos on modeling and analyzing some actual transformers. So in the next video, we'll do just the modeling of the 3D transformer from scratch. So if you're interested, you can check that out. Thanks for watching.